Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gamers, if you new me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Marion's Path. So guys, let's just go ahead and jump right back into it. I guess we're getting ready for the Heifer Parade. Oh, I hope that content is actually in there. I really want to see it. I want to see Marion held atop people's uh, shoulders as they carry her into the parade. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, guys, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes when entertain you. And let's jump right in. Alarm shand, you're up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for this, Jesse, for our talk. I let everyone know you'll be attending. Just you see, sis, you'll be the second biggest star in town. Second? After me, of course. <laughs> Jesse hops onto her bicycle and speeds off down the path. How she rides in that dress is beyond me. Marion and I watch her dust trail disappear over the horizon. Some things never change, do they? With all the other changes in our lives, it's nice for one or two things to remain the same. Marion nods, but I can tell there's much on her mind. You sure you're ready for this? I truly am. It would be like a homecoming for me, I, I hope. I think back on the trenches once more. Four years lost, or maybe just removed. I hope so too. You know, my homecoming wasn't what I expected, but it was just what I had needed. <clears throat> I reach out and take Marion's hand. And afterward, we'll both be ready to start our new lives together. Oh. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Hello, Gran. Tell me, is it true? She really kicked the old man? Gran is always a top her gossip game. How did she even find out? There's her network of spies have ears in every homestead. It's more of a trip, I'm told. Oh, I certainly hope it knocks some sense into him. As do I. Owen should be home from his golfing trip soon, if not already. Had yesterday's exchange or today's respite done him any good? None of us can be certain. I suppose we'll learn soon enough. I'd feel grand on my visit over dinner. A much less a much less eventful dinner than last night's. Thankfully, and now we relax in front of the fire sipping on tea. Jesse came by early to help with the finishing touches on the parade outfit. Marion will look precious, just you wait. I look forward to seeing it. Marion would look beautiful no matter what, but I'm excited to see their handiwork. Almost as excited as I am anxious about the whole affair. The McLeod sisters agreed to come early tomorrow, heard, heard and all, to get ready for the festival. We'll all, head the, we'll all then head into town together, as one big family. After that, we can only hope for the best. I can't imagine all the butterflies Marion must be feeling right now. And again, she was confident enough to choose to go, and to stay behind tonight to face her father. Perhaps she's the bravest of all of us. So have you heard of what Gemma would be wearing to the parade? A dress, I presume. But the Gran is purposely changing the subject or simply compelled to divulge the latest town chatter. I do not know. Aye, your dress. Purchased from a bona fide seamstress. Look at those tights. Always struggling the line, if you ask me. That's cheating. Gran continues to rattle off the latest gossip, but I only half listen. More concerned about Marion's well-being than the preparations for a small town parade. I hear the tights have borrowed Jesse, Jesse, Jersey cows to run in the procession this year. Jerseys, can you believe it? Instead of proper Scots cows. They don't stand a chance. When I was your age, any breed not a Highland or an, a or an Ag Angus would be... Gran stops short and we both turn around, turn toward the source of the knock. I'll see who it is. It's gonna be Alana? No, oh, it's... okay. Marion, what's wrong? N nothing, I just... She stands alone in the field, twiddling her hoof fingers, searching for the words. Oh, Malcolm, my nerves got the best of me. I couldn't face father again, not tonight. Not, the, not, not tonight with the parade so soon. I'm sorry, I... I just wanted to be with you. Say no more. I reach out and pull her from the cool night air into a warm hug. <laughs> Agnes nearly explodes with joy at the sight of Marion. I finally have my girl home. Oh, how much I love the sight of ye. In an instant, Grand has poured Marion another cup of tea. Pull up a chair. I was just telling Malcolm here about your dress. Finished in the nick of time and lovely to boot. Would you like to try it on? Oh no, thank you, Agnes. I'm afraid I'll jinx it. Well, don't you fret. You'll be dressed heads and tails above the rest. What do you mean, heads and shoulders, Gran? Nay, Malcolm, it's the lass's tail, not her shoulders. That'll draw the judge's attention. Rain blushes through her fuzzy cheeks. Well, I appreciate Gran's excitement. Her energy can't be helping Marion's nerves. Gran, Marion has a big day tomorrow. Perhaps we should give her some space. Gran shoots me a dirty look. She's clearly eager to continue fawning over Marion like an adopted granddaughter. 
Ah, uh, yes, I wouldn't be opposed to be to retiring early tonight. <laughs> she punctuates her sentence with a yawn, which finally seems to mollify Gran. Oh, of course, yes, dearie, I... Gran's sentence is interrupted by a yawn of her own. Suppose I should lay down, too. When you get to my age, bedtime gets earlier and earlier. Gran stands up and casts one more smile toward Marion. Oh, my darling, the town would be thrilled to have you back. I hope so. I have no idea what to expect. I expect that your family will be there for you. Dear, not everyone will love you, but the people who matter will. Don't worry any more than you feel you need to. Thank you, Agnes. And don't you dare sleep in, you two. There's work to do tomorrow. Mary and I exchange a knowing look. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, boy. Ah, cuties! Once we're settled into the bed, I'll bit very tightly. I rest my hand atop Marion's chest. I can feel her pulse beating quickly. Marion, your heart is racing. I know we both might be exhausted, but do you want to talk about anything? She places both her hands over mine, running her hooves along the edges of my calloused palms. Tomorrow I'll be here soon. Then what? I don't know if I'll feel free or, burden or more burdened. There's truly no way of knowing. That's the frightening part, but it's the exciting part too, I think. My stomach is in knots. You're strong. You're brave. Look at how far you've come since all this began. You've done this all yourself. Perhaps she doesn't need to be told anymore how courageous she is. Perhaps she just needs to be shown love. I believe in you. You should believe in yourself, too. I press even more closely into her, trying to lay her fears with the warmth and energy of my body, hoping my presence shows her how much she means to me. She responds in kind, telling me her, telling me, telling me her heart is with mine. There isn't much room in this bed. Oh, I'm quite aware. Again, I'm happy to sleep on the floor so you have more space. But I definitely need a bigger bed should Marion, dare I hope, end up here more permanently. On the contrary, I was hoping you'd like to rest on me. I swallow. I can certainly try if I might calm your nerves. We wiggle, into each other, we wiggle to each other as I roll on top of her body. The half of her, the half of her cradles me as I nuzzle my, my head into her neck. This makes a lovely pillow. Marion in turn holds my head, lifting my lips up to hers. As we kiss, it releases so much pressure that is built inside me. I don't want it to stop. Marion must have the same thought, because I feel her start to slide her nightgown up to her knees. Uh-oh. Is this all right? Gran won't hear a thing. I'll be extra quiet. No, I mean, you want to do this now? Marion kisses me once more. It will help me relax. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, it'll help you relax, all right. All right. That love nest. Okay. I wake into the sound of mooing. Marion? Groggily, I realize the sound is not coming from her. In fact, Arian is nowhere to be found. I roll out of bed, throw on some clothes, and step into the main room to find... Grace? Morning, sleepyhead. Want some breakfast? She slides her plate across the table. On it is a lone remaining pancake. Judging from the dirty dishes in the basin, there were uh, there at one time many more. Everyone. Ah. I'm um, sure. Where is everyone? Outside, getting her our herd ready. Marion asked us to let you sleep in. It's just about time to go, so dig in. I do just that, eager to join Marion's side on her big day. I take it to you and Jesse and... Grace answers my unasked question. It's just Jesse and me. Father stayed home. It uttered a word when Sis and I left with all the cows. You brought them here. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised I slept through all the commotion. I'm surprised you did, too. Did you have an eventful night? Mm hmm If Grace keeps being so brazen with her questions, I see no reason not to be equally forward with my answers. There was some work to be done around the farm, yes? Grinding the corn, churning some butter, shaking out the sheets. Grace makes a gagging noise. You know, I hope you two lovebirds appreciate everything Jesse and I do for you. We had a hell of a time wrangling all those cows without Marion's help. An urgent cry carries through the open window. Malcolm, Grace, come quickly! Uh-oh. Has the cow have the cows gotten loose? What is it? Are you alright? The morning is thick with fog and Gran is in a state. I'm just dandy, thank you. It's poor Marion who's gone rag. She's left without us. 
as in left for the parade. Just so, she took her cows and disappeared into the fog, and these stubby legs of mine couldn't keep up. I looked from Gran to Jesse to make some sense of the situation. Aye, with all of us fawning over her dress, her makeup, her herd, I think Marion was feeling a bit overwhelmed. She doesn't want us with her. I think we all can't help but feel like we've let Marion down somehow. Marion told me she'd see us in town. I think she wants to... To what? To take the bull by the horns. We all wince. Even Jessie at her own words, she continues. This is, Mar this is Marion's moment, come what may. I told her she doesn't have to march in the parade alone, but I think she wants to. Nonsense! Malcolm, ready Hazel and load, load me into the cart. We'll head off. We'll head her off at the pass. What pass? <laughs> Gran, if Marion took her herd through the fields, we'll have a hard time finding him in the fog. Why don't we just do as she says and meet her in town, where the procession begins? Gran still seems skeptical, and also I have my concerns. But Jessie is right. This is Marion's time to shine, and Marion's choice to take J choice to make. Come on, Agnes. I ride my bicycle, and you, Grace, and Malcolm can ride with Hazel in the cart. We'll get there in good time. And get good seats. <laughs> All right, fine. Just let me fetch my hat. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see the parade. And how people react, too. Town Square is even more crowded than Stag and Annie on Whiskey Wednesday. We find a place to pull up at the edge of the throng. I don't remember the festival ever being this popular. The effort parade has always been a happy gathering for local families, but this year, it must be the first time the fire has taken place since the war. Today's not just a celebration of bountiful cows and the, and the good harvest to come, then. It's a celebration of family come home, of a return to normalcy, of peace. There's joy in the air, and I even can't help but smile as I hitch up Hazel and help Grant from the cart. The fog has burned off the s and the sun warms our skin. A perfect day for a festival. Agnes! Uh, goodness! I've never seen Ockney Craig so busy! It looks like the whole town's shown up. Farmers from miles around have come too. There are so many faces I recognize, even a few I don't. This may make for a bigger reveal than Marion or any of us expected. What will happen? What will people say? My thoughts are interrupted as the smells of savories and sweets reach our noses. A dozen marketeers peddled pastries, treats, and of course blocks of cheese to passers-by. Oi, do I smell rum cake? Oh, there she- oh! <laughs> Gran reels, race, reel, reels Grace back in before she disappears into the throng. We can treat ourselves after the parade, dear. Right now we need to find a spot. Agnes Malcolm, over here! I spy Jessie's red hat bobbing in the sea of people. She's ridden ahead to claim a position by, beside the parade route, and now I'm glad she did. Make way! Nope, there she goes, rushing off. Sorry, Hazel, but this parade's for heifers only. We'll come back for you soon as it's over. <laughs> Grand may be short, but she's stout as an ox. With ease, she propels us through the crowd to where Jesse stands. By some miracle, Jesse has saved us an excellent spot. From here, we'll have a clear view of the whole procession. Nicely done. Nicely done, Jesse. Don't mention it. Nothing that a few flirty smiles can handle. She levels with such a smile at me, and ever so briefly my heart flips. A powerful weapon indeed. Malcolm, has it started yet? Oh, where are my glasses? Mixed in with the crowd's voices are low moos. Craning my neck to see, to, to see look down the line, I see a great many cows ready to begin their march. Beside them, their owners stand expectantly. Young women and girls, farmers' daughters, all each hoping to be named Heifer Queen. It won't be long, Gran. And so we stand, and we wait for the parade to begin. Despite all the unknowns, I hadn't exactly expected to be a spectator today. Truth be told, my affairs lately have felt in some ways beyond my control. But this is Marion's day, and I'm excited to be here for her. To cheer her on, even if it's from the sidelines. Can you see Marion? Afraid not. I look again, ahead of the herd are a dozen little girls, too small to lead their own cattle. Each is dressed up with ribbons and flowers in their hair, running about with wild abandon. Rabina Robertson shouts out to the shouts at them, instructing the girls to line up, shortest to tallest. She'd probably have better luck herding cats. In front of the whole procession stands Bulgare, dressed even more strangely than usual. Hurrah! He eyes the crowd. When he spots me, he hurries over. Oh my. Malcolm, ladies, you made it! Oh, we wouldn't miss this for the world! Kren's jaw has gone slack. Lord have mercy, what are you doing dressed like that, Mr. Buchan? Mr. Buchan? Nice hat. 
Did you ever wake it from hibernation? <laughs> Nay, tis me old bearskin from the time in the from the, with the Highlanders. The parade marshal ought to wear something martial, no? Parade marshal, you? Mr. Tite had to attend an important meeting of the Broom Makers Guild in, Inver in Inverness, you see. So they needed a new, a new masters of ceremonies. And to lead the heifer parade, they said, who better than old bull bull-headed Bulgare? What an honor! And with the parade it shall be, by William Wallace's beard. Have you ever seen Akna Craig so full of money merrymakers? The stag and Annie would be full to the brim tonight. Say, Bulgare, have you seen Marion? The pub owner pauses a moment to think. No, I don't believe I have, come to think of it. Had Marion seen the size of the crowd? If so, perhaps she'd had second thoughts. Jesse, don't you say your big sister's angling for the title of Heifer Queen this year? Last I heard. But you might not recognize her. Hmm, she might be towards the back. Most of the real contenders for the title are at the tail of the... His eyes have drifted over to a table where the three very primly dressed ladies are seated. The judges, I presume. One is tapping vigorously at her timepiece. Look, that's me cue. Come see me at the luncheon after the procession. I've got, I've made some fine fare to share. If it's the recipe the pub owner is best known for, I make mental note to stay far, far away. <laughs> Poor Bulgare, he just can't catch a break with his food. Bulgare well, darts back to the center of the road, where he picks up a bag he'd left on the ground. Here we go! Not a bag, a bagpipes! He huffs and puffs into the instrument, whipping up a good drone and the volume of the crowd drops. Nope! <laughs> a drummer falls in behind Bulgare. Is that Murdoch? Who begins tapping out a rhythm. It's starting! Agnes, can you see? Gran squints. Eh, are those the heifers? No, Gran. But between the two of them, the two men do sport an impressive amount of facial hair. They fall into step, and the parade begins. <laughs> the first group to pass by is a gaggle of small girls, only slightly less unruly than before. Each has been given a small basket of wildflowers, which they hand out freely to the crowd, as the big as the big bows in their hair bob this way and that. Oh, Malcolm, aren't they just the sweetest? Aye, Gran, they are. But Gran becomes lost in the spectacle, and becoming nervous for Marion. How must she be feeling now that the parade's begun? Is she really bringing up the rear, or after seeing the crowds, did she decide not to go through with it after all? Look, that girl has horns and a tail just like Marion! I follow Grace's Grace. Sure enough, one of the girls sports adorable horns made from twisted tin cans, and a tail made of thick hemp rope. It's Flory, unabashedly dressed up as a cow, ambling about and calling Moo, my heart melts. I can't help but think about it. think back to our covert trip into town, and the tiny girl's attitude toward Marion's curious condition, her enthusiasm and childlike awe. At the time, I was preoccupied by concern, but now looking back, it was one of the, it was one of the cutest things I'd ever seen. It helps put my mind at ease. Flory proceeds to wander off, wander off the path and into the crowd, as unsupervised kids are wont to do. At the corner of my eye, I see Robina shout and run after her. It must be so much work watching children. Aye, but it's worth it. Oh boy, here come the heifers! I can smell them before I see them. The eponymous stare at stars of the heifer parade while under view. <laughs> there are cows of all shapes and sizes. Breeds from every corner of Scotland. The mood of the onlookers, seemingly drinking in their brief moment of, moment of fame. All are decorated with flowers and ribbons, as much as the women. Occasionally a big lumbering body bumps into the owner, which only causes more giggles and smiles. The farmer's daughters walk alongside and wave, proudly displaying their finest attire. Some are dressed lavishly, while the others display a more modest rural fashion. Only one, to my knowledge, should be dressed as a cow. I peer down the procession once again, seeing if I can spot Marion. Heh, <laughs> here comes Gemma. Oh, wow. Okay. Gran was right about the tights. The girl Gemma wears a costume fit for a Victorian duchess. Her outfit is as out of place as the, Jer as the Jersey cows ambling beside her. Oh, that rascal had better not steal the title from our dear Marion. If she's named Heifer Queen, it'll be because she's a big... She's a big, uh... Don't say it! <laughs> Actually, more like Gemma will win because her mother is sitting at the judges' table. I hadn't registered, I hadn't registered before, but one of the judges looks smugly over, uh, out over the, heaven, the parade indeed. Maggie tight. Grand gasps. I'm surprised her spies hadn't uncovered this small town betrayal. That cheat! I cry foul! I appreciate Grand's team spirit, but right now who wins is the least of my concerns. My heart swells because behind Gemma, taking up the very rear of the procession. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right here. In the very next episode, we shall get our look at Marion, her new dress, and how the town is gonna perceive her.
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can, or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!